Right, I thought I would do a little video testing out this LM323K, which is a free amp, 5 volt linear regulator. So, what do we need? Right, we've got a bench meter over here. We've got a variable power supply to feed some voltage in, and we've got our load tester there. So let's get all that hooked up, and we'll get on with testing. Okay, so for step one, what I've done is I've connected up the grounds to the case of the regulator and I've connected up the positive from supply straight into the load tester just so we can give it a bit of a test first of all, going directly without the regulator in the circuit. So I set it for 5 volts uh, with a half amp limit um, and I've just realised how either how inaccurate that amp display is. The um, Voltage display is fairly accurate. This is actually super accurate. This uh, array, and it's got 5.07, and we've got 5.1 on there, so that's you know close enough. It's only a one digit, so uh, well one decimal point. But this one's uh, got two or three when it's under three volts. Anyway, so we've got five volts, um, 0.1 amp, and that's drawing half a watt. Uh, and this thinks it's uh, got 0.47 amps. And I've actually limited this at half an amp, so we'll just turn this up to. 0.2 amps and you'll see straight away the voltage drops off and we've got no current so this thing's basically limited to constant current so it thinks it thinks it's giving out half an amp it's not so uh, yeah this is obviously not very accurate I'm going to have to see if I can open this up and adjust it in another video anyway let's just turn this off a bit stick it on about an amp yeah so that's drawing 200 milliamps and it thinks it's 0.57 Anyway, let's get it. What we'll do is we'll get this set up accurately to half an amp. So we've got half an amp set there on the draw. That's apparently 0.87. Okay, so it seems to be getting more accurate as you turn it up. Let's put it up to one amp. Right, so one amp. Okay, right. No, it thinks 1.3 amp. Yeah, this is quite a bit out. Um, so what we'll do, I'm just going to set this to half an amp. I'm just going to tune this in. Oh, there we go. Right, so that is approximately half an amp there. That's the maximum it's allowed me. So just to test that, we'll just set it up to 0.6 an amp and it drops off. So yeah. We're back to half an amp, it's back to 5 volts. Okay, so we set up to supply half an amp at 5 volts, and now we're going to connect this regulator up and uh, test it out. Okay, so we're wired up now, we've got the regulator here, the ground's connected, uh, the output, 5 volt output, is going to the load tester, and the input from the supply is going there. Now, because obviously we've got this set to 5 volts, we're actually going to get less than 5 out to the load tester, because the regulator will drop some off, so we actually need to set this up above... 5 volts. In fact, we can test what the minimum voltage is while we're doing this. So, we'll switch this on. And there we go. We've got half an amp at 3, oh, we've got 3.5 volts coming out. So I'm just going to run that for a few seconds. And we shall switch off. And I'm just going to test the case. That's nice and cool. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't, you know, rapidly heating up or anything. Okay, so let's put it back on again. Now, the reason it's not heating up... Um, is because we're actually below the regulation voltage, it's actually barely doing any regulation at all. Now, if we whack this up to 30 volts, that thing's going to be absolutely stressed to hell and uh, it's going to be dissipating huge amounts of heat. So, we're not going to do that, but what we're going to do, um, we're just going to turn the voltage up a bit 7.5 actually. Hmm. Let's turn it down. It's hard to get accurate this. Okay, so we can see where it's 0 .6, 6 .3, and we've got 4.79 on the out. 6.6, let's just give it a fine tuning. Nope, try again. 6.8, 6.9. What seems to be the limit? 4.93 volts seems to be the limit, so let's just turn this back down. There we go, right. Okay, so we only need six point well, somewhere between six point five yeah. Six point five volt output seems to be enough to give this a full 
well, you know, it's not actually giving a full 5 volt, it's giving 4.93, which is close enough, but to get its full out regulated output, we only need a 6.5 volt input, so it's only 1.5 volt drop. Um, let's just test that out again, make sure it's not getting hot. Mm, it's getting warm now. Yeah, I certainly want to pull 3 amps through it for more than a few seconds. Okay, right, turn it back on. What we're going to do now is going to crank up the current limit. I'll test it successfully. We've got it on the minimal voltage. Again, I'm using the minimal voltage so that I don't uh, cause loads of heat because this isn't actually attached to a heatsink. Right. What we're going to do is just temporarily crank that up. Mm. Two amps, let's just turn that off. Don't want it to get too hot. Yeah, it's heating up a fair, fair amount. Turn it on again. Yeah, once you get to about three amps, it actually drops out completely. Well, two point, so 2.9 amps, it dropped out. Um, let's just check if it works at 2.8. Yeah, working. Well, no. 2.7, 2.6. Okay, it's still working at 2.6. So, without a heat sink, yeah, I think it's firmly throttling that. Let's turn that power supply off. Without the heat sink, we're not getting anywhere near full output voltage. It does get quite hot. So, I'm just going to scale that back down. Half an amp again. And back on. Well, slightly more now, 4.98. So it's, uh, it's almost as though it needed some sort of wearing in or needed to come to air temperature before it was able to accurately adjust the voltage. So yeah, so it's 4.98 now, which is about as close as you're possibly going to get to 5. Again, this is super accurate. So uh, I trust that. That is you know, 0.02 away from 5 volts. Yeah, we we'll just need to heat up a bit, I guess. But yeah, we can't we can't test the full voltage range because it just does not work. Um, when it's not connected to a heatsink, I believe. What I'm going to do actually, I'm going to grab a couple other of these devices and compare them, see what they do. Okay, so we've got a second device wired up. No load voltage is at uh, 5.01. Load on. Come on, focus in. We've got half an amp. Let's give it a quick crank up. It performs exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> so at two and a half amps, it's around four volts, and then as you get to about two point seven, two point eight, it completely cuts out. And again, it's got fairly warm. So I think uh, that must be the thermal characteristic of this device. Um, I've got a third one actually. On 323k steel, so we'll try that one as well. And again, I expect the results are probably going to be similar now based on those two completely different brands. Um, hang on, which one is this one? Let's just turn the power off so I don't short anything out. Um, that's a national, and the one that we tried first is an ST, I believe. Yep, that's an ST part, it's not focusing very well. Yep, ST. So we'll try this. Uh, second slightly different variant at national part and we'll see what that does device number three connected load on and we'll crank it all the way up and again same thing happens now thoughts just occurred to me that i'm actually being stupid uh, it's probably dropping out because the input voltage is too low it probably wants uh something a bit more significant to be able to deliver its full load now this is not particularly clever idea to be honest giving it 9 volts but what we'll do is let's just give it a quick blast at uh, 2 amps see what happens there you go look 4.8 volts so it was able to regulate a lot better with a bit more a bit higher input so uh, what we we'll do again we'll give it the full 3 and see what we'll give it yeah give it full 3 see what happens oop 
Bring it down a bit, 2.8. No. 3.6, we're at 4.82, okay. So it does work almost at its, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, too hot that, let's not be doing this anymore. Um, yeah, so okay, so we can manage to get 2.6 amps out with a 9 volt input and, well, 4.5 volt-ish output with 2.6 amps. I assume it's probably better if you actually increase the volts a bit more. Um, anyway, that's that. So, why are we messing around testing regulators? Well, we've got this on 323k here on this uh, WPC drive board, and we've got no 5 volts. So, either the regulator's completely dead, or there's something on this board shorted on the 5 volt rail that's dragging it down. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take it out, we're going to get it up to the load tester, and we're going to be able to vary the current and see what it can deliver before it shuts down, if at all. Right, I've just desoldered that from the board and separated it from the heatsink. We've got it wired up, a little bit trickier because the uh, leads are so short on this one. Um, right, so we've got the load tester on, got the power supply on, and we stick it on 5 volts first. And we're getting zero, entirely zero. Give it a little bit of crank. Absolutely nothing. So that's completely shut down or shorted out on the output side. Um, yeah, that's dead. Nothing at all coming out of that. Right, so I've just fitted the new device and I thought I would quickly test. Um, well, I won't be able to do this on the camera, let's just try it anyway. I thought I'd just test from ground to output and input. And as you can hear from the beep on the continuity, come here, pain. Grr, can't do it very well on the camera. Right, there you go. So as you can see, we were getting a short there. And the reason is, uh, the, legs, the legs pass through some small holes on this heat sink, and obviously it's just slightly out of alignment. Need to, there's not very much play in it. And if it's slightly out of alignment, it touches the heat sink and you get a short out. So I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to put some heat shrink on those legs, just to make sure there's no way that it can short out, because I don't want this to move by a millimetre. You know, if someone puts it in the cab and bashes it, it's obviously not tight fully yet, but you know, if someone bashes it and makes it touch the legs and shorts out the regulator. So I'm not sure how they line these up from the factory perfectly without having any chance. It's literally only a couple of millimetres of movement for it to be a short. So I'm not sure how they would have done that reliably without any sort of insulators on the legs. So I'm going to add some on now myself. There we go, we've got some little insulators on the legs now which will fit through those holes there and provide protection from those legs touching the metal. Okay, so we've got uh, the power supply connected up to the positive lead of the bridge rectifier. Um, ground to ground, other ground to ground. That's a 5 volt test point going up to the load tester. So what we're going to do is we're going to power the board up and we're going to see what we can get load wise now that it's properly connected up and heat synced. So uh, let's do that. Right, so uh, 5 volt LED is on. We're obviously below the threshold, so we'll up to 6.5. And we have 5 volts on the output. Now I believe this is meant to be 12. I'll see what I'm doing. There we go, 12 volts. Okay, so we've got 12 volts in, 5 volt LEDs on. 5 volts. Currently, so what we've got to set at, get on five uh, half amp. No, oh, don't like that. Interesting. I almost have me currently set. What was that? I can't see what I'm doing. Let's try again. Hmm, it's not very efficient, is it? So uh, we're drawing half an amp and we're putting out, I don't know, that's not accurate, is it? So it's uh, one point, uh, it's 0.8 amps, something like that. I could test it with a meter, but it's not really worth hooking it up. Okay, so we are drawing... Yeah, so we're drawing half an amp on the output. Let's take it up to one amp. Yep, still working fine. Two amps. 4.89 volts. Nope. Cut out. 
not particularly uh, truthful, are they, with the uh, data sheets for these? Never gets to three amps. We're at two point eight, and we've got four point eight. Four point eight. Uh, God, they do get hot these things. Yeah, they're certainly not efficient. So, uh, well, it's working. We can get up to two point eight amps out of it. Thirty point five watts. And we are drawing three, well, let's say three amps. Mm, efficiency is not terrible, terrible, is it? Yee, these things get hot. Let me grab my thermal meter. Well, it's been on for about a minute while I ran off to get my temperature monitor, so let's uh, let's give it a go. I can't really see what I'm doing here. Oh, 77. 80. Yeah, let's not run that for any longer. <laughs> it might well be designed for free amps, but uh, I think with that heat sink it can't do it. So yeah, it's up to about 80, 80 degrees. That's pretty hot. We can see it gets hot. Look at the uh, label there. It's cooked from its uh, previous life in the machine. Heat travelling up and baking the dust on there. Um, is that, how's that cooling down now? Can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, 75. Yeah, it's dropping off. Yeah, well, it's definitely working, and it definitely is able to, you know, uh, generate up to 2.8 amps, uh, although it would get very hot doing so. God, it's hot. Um, so I think it's working. Well, what I'm going to do, actually, I'll let it cool down, and then I'm going to run it at, say, 1.5 amps for, like, half an hour just to make sure it uh, works nicely and doesn't get too hot in that, under those conditions. Right, let's see how things are doing. Let's see if I can get this lined up. There we go. 54, 55 degrees. That's a lot more respectable. You know, still fairly hot, but it's linear, so, you know, it's not efficient. 56. Yeah, different parts of the heatsink. 54 to 57. I think that's acceptable. That's, uh, that's working fine.